Howdy, this is Tubal Kane again, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about lathe tools and how to grind them. One of the trickiest jobs for many people is to, to properly sharpen or grind a uh, high-speed lathe tool. And uh, I've seen some of the botched up jobs that people do and they struggle with it, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to grind a right-hand turning tool. Now there's two great books. South Bend has had this book out, How to Run a Lathe, for uh, almost a hundred years. It's been printed in many languages and you can get it on eBay, either an original or a Lindsay reprint. So that's really a good book. It's got several sections on the angles. And then similarly, there's another book by Atlas and uh, Clausing, and that's got uh, also several pages on tool bit angles. So get a hold of those if you can't understand what I'm talking about on this short video today. Now a uh, turning tool is really too small for me to uh, sh show you so I've got a larger teaching aid that I'm going to use. This is quarter inch high speed steel and it'll be very difficult for me to point out these angles for you so instead I've got a larger uh, wooden model that I'm going to show you and here it is. This is a right hand turning tool and you can always tell the direction of a turning tool by facing it toward you and if it cuts on the right hand side then it's a right hand turning tool or right hand tool. Uh, if it cuts on the other side it's a uh, left hand tool and those aren't used nearly as often. Most of your work is going to be with a right hand turning tool or a right hand facing tool. And there are several angles that we need to talk about. First, the overall shape of the tool should be slightly less than 90 degrees or 85 degrees is really what they call for. And the reason for that is that if you're turning to a shoulder that allows you to come into the shoulder and then feed out. So, and the shoulder of course is 90 degrees so we want to go a little less and so it would be 85. Now a facing tool is ground similarly only with an included angle here of uh, 55 degrees instead of uh, 85 degrees. Now I'm going to lay this out for you on this piece of wood to give you an idea of the shape. Now you can do your own layout if you want on a piece of quarter inch uh, uh, tool steel or you could use uh, scrap steel to practice with put a little bluing or layout die on there and lay it out the way I'm going to show you on uh, this wooden model. If you can visualize coming over about two-thirds of an inch or two-thirds of the way I should say uh, which would be approximately there I'm using a white paint marker here that's about two-thirds of the way approximately and then we want to lay it out such that uh, we're coming back about like this so That's about that angle, and then we're going to come over this way, as I just mentioned, a little bit less than 90, or I, I have said 85 degrees, and you can even, even check that with a square if you want, and it should be a little less than the 90 degrees of, of the square. That's all you really need to lay out, and uh, everything else is going to... Uh, uh, become apparent as the grinding starts and this is very important that this angle comes back at about 10 degrees and that will give you your side clearance or relief. Now remember that clearance and relief angles really means the same thing. Rake angles would prefer, will refer to the angles on the top of the tool. Also remember that when you use your uh, Armstrong or Williams tool holders uh, they hold the tool at 16 and a half degree angle, so you're automatically getting a back rake of 16 and a half just by using the tool holder. Okay, I went over to my wood cutting bandsaw and I set the table on my delta 12, 14 inch for 10 or 12 degrees, and all I did was to saw along the white line and ta da! that was the waste stock that you're going to grind off or I sawed it off and uh, that is the angle that I would grind first and that again you are holding your 
tool up to the grinding wheel. If you can visualize this to be the grinding wheel, you're holding it at a 10 degree angle. Now when you do that, uh, move this back and forth across the grinding wheel so you don't groove the wheel and so you get a smooth surface and that this is one continuous plane rather than a series of facets like your wife's diamond ring. You want it to be smooth. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take it over and I'm going to saw, you will be grinding, but I'm going to saw this off and it'll look like that. And that will produce this end clearance. The end clearance is extremely important so that when you're turning, it doesn't rub. Only the tip of the tool should be touching, not the whole front. Then it's rubbing, not cutting. Similarly, when you face something, you need this relief here so it's not rubbing. And the cutting, ang a cutting edge itself is presenting itself to the work. Okay, we'll be right back in a minute. Okay, initially of course we ground this material away. And then just now we ground this off. And that's the waste stock, but yours will of course be grinding dust rather than a single piece like that. But now two things have happened. First of all, we have uh, produced our 85 degree angle or the overall shape of this turning tool and secondly we have the all-important end clearance right here which uh, is uh, 10 or more degrees and that is what again keeps us from rubbing and just the point of the tool touches the work. Be sure and keep your tool uh, cool as you're grinding it in water uh, as you burn your fingers, I think that will become apparent. Now next we're going to grind the uh, side rake on. We're not going to put a back rake on it because that's automatically produced by the tool holder. So we want about an eight degree uh, side rake on it and I'll do that right now. All right, I just took this to the band saw and I ground, I should say saw, you're going to grind the uh, side rake and I have sawed off or removed this much and that's not very much and that was 10 degrees that I set that uh, bandsaw table at and now we have a tool that has all of the angles on it and remember that the cutting surface here, the cutting area is really just right here in this area here and the, if we would take a gauge and check it right here not sure how that's showing up. But that's what we call the angle of keenness. And that's where the actual cutting is to take place. And we have to make sure that it is sharp right in there. Now, if uh, when your tool gets dull, it's only going to get dull in this little area here, not really any other place. So you can just touch it up on the grinding wheel. Now, some people like to hone this on an oil stone before they uh, actually do any cutting on the lathe. I don't do that, but if, if you think it's necessary, go ahead and do it. One other thing that you may need to do or may want to do is to put a little bit of a radius on the end. That, that is to round it just a little bit here, about a sixteenth of an inch radius. It doesn't need to be very much. And that's going to give you a very uh, uh, smooth cut. If you don't have a little bit of radius on there and then you examine your cut very closely with a magnifying glass, you're going to see that in effect you have produced an extremely fine thread and we don't want that. So just a little bit of a radius on there and that can be either round on or it can be honed on an oil stone. But be careful when you do that that you don't remove any of your other angles or you uh, can really destroy all of the other work that you did. Remember you can grind both ends of your high speed steel or you can grind it off and start over but it, then it gets a little bit uh, too short to work with but sometimes uh, just practice on a piece of quarter inch square mild steel or maybe three eighths square remember that these high speed steel bits come in uh, quarter inch well even come in three sixteenths quarter inch five sixteenths three eighths and half all of these various sizes and uh, it's probably easier to do on a larger one than it is on a smaller one. Once you get the knack, it's like riding a bicycle. Uh, now, if you're a carbide user, 
None of this applies to you, but I use carbide and I still like high speed steel for a lot of the, uh, the work that I do. I hope that this helped you uh, on grinding your right hand turning tool, all of the angles that we talked about here. If there's any interest in this on YouTube, I may uh, go through this with some of the other tools such as the uh, facing tool and the, uh, the threading tools. Give me favorable comments if this was of any use to you. Thanks for watching this rather long video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.